Thirty years ago, opium was a small-scale crop in Thailand. In the Doi Tung area, it was grown mainly by women from the hill tribes. The opium poppy grew well in this remote mountainous area where other crops failed. Its sap became the hill tribe's only source of ready money. But such a high-value, portable crop quickly attracted outsiders, gangsters and outlaws. Under their influence, an increasing amount of land was cleared for poppy growing. But the hill tribe people gained little. Instead, as opium and heroin became easier to obtain, they developed their own addiction problem. Addicts were unable to find work or support their families. The people of Doi Tung found themselves in a destructive cycle. In a single generation, their lands had suffered massive deforestation. Traditional slash-and-burn farming and population growth made matters worse. Poverty, combined with illiteracy and a lack of opportunities, pushed many young women into the urban areas and prostitution. And with prostitution and drug addiction came AIDS. It was to break this cycle that the Doi Tung Development Project was conceived in 1988. Its founder and guiding force was Her Royal Highness Princess Sina Karintra, the mother of Thailand's king. Her work is now continued by the Mei Fa Luang Foundation. Her project covers 150 square kilometers of Chiang Rai province, in the heart of the Golden Triangle, an upland area split between Thailand, Laos and Myanmar or Burma. 11,000 people live in the Doi Tung project area. Most are from hill tribes such as the Aka, Shan and Lahu. From its start, the Doi Tung project recognized the importance of economic incentives. Opium could only be eradicated if new sources of income were created to take its place. Crop substitution and reforestation had to be part of a program of sustainable economic development. The project was planned in three phases. Around 35 government departments as well as state and private enterprises were involved. Phase 1 began in 1988. The first priority was to end opium production, rehabilitate local addicts and stop trafficking in and through the area. Better economic opportunities were created through crop substitution, job creation and skills training. Infrastructure was improved. Environmental problems were tackled through agroforestry, soil conservation and large-scale tree planting programs. The project still has another 15 years to run. Its ultimate goal is to become self-sufficient and self-financing. But Doi Tung has already established itself as a beacon project, with a record of success that can offer help and inspiration to others. Local per capita incomes are now around 30,000 baht, or 800 US dollars. That's 10 times the level when the project began. Farmers are introducing new techniques and new crops, including high-value products like coffee and macadamia nuts. Exotic plants and bulbs are propagated and packaged for sale overseas. Top quality fruit and vegetables are grown to meet the standards of discerning markets like Japan. The policy of diversification has also introduced totally new products, such as handmade saar paper. Bringing in new handicrafts and skills has allowed more members of the Doi Tung community to generate income. Their work is supported by professional advice and marketing, and the products are sold through high-quality shops run by the Mei Fa Luang Foundation. The Doi Tung project has brought change to village life but it is change that has strengthened, not weakened, local culture. It has restored security and improved the quality of everyday life. By creating jobs, social structures weakened by crime and drugs have been restored. Everyone, old and young, has a valued role in the community. Public utilities and services make life easier and strengthen links with the rest of Thailand. Healthcare has improved. Children have access to education. Young people have alternatives to prostitution and drugs. These improvements are the fruits of Her Royal Highness the Princess Mother's vision. The changes she inspired have created a balance between integrated development and sustainable conservation. 
Her work at Doitung is now continued by her devoted children and grandchildren. They are already taking steps to apply her ideas elsewhere in the region. They believe the lessons from Doitung can offer a better future for many peoples and their environments worldwide.